Hey, 42 here. What would happen if all the humans on Earth disappeared tomorrow? Well, these real-life ghost towns, which have all been abandoned for various reasons, give a glimpse into what life will be like when nature is left to reclaim man-made places. First up is Hashima Island, commonly referred to as Battleship Island due to its resemblance to a Japanese battleship. On a side note, why do Japanese battleships look so darn creepy? This abandoned island is one of the 505 uninhabited islands off the southwest coast of Japan. What makes this island different from its 504 other neighboring islands is that Hashima Island used to be a thriving mining community. In 1887, during the industrialization of Japan, this island was set up as an undersea coal mining facility. Many of the miners lived on the island all year round, so the island functioned as an offshore city, including living quarters and all the conveniences of a regular city. Thousands of people lived and worked on the island during its 87 years of operation, hitting a peak population of 5,259 people in 1959. However, in 1974, the mine was closed down and all the residents left the island. Due to years of neglect and lack of maintenance, the island is now in ruins. Nature has reclaimed many of the buildings, which are now highly unstable, and many of them have collapsed. The whole island is like an eerie post-apocalyptic nightmare, speckled with the faintest memories of miners who spent their lives there. It has since become somewhat of a tourist attraction in Japan. But tourists should be wary, as it's a dangerous place that has seen no maintenance, and the buildings could easily crumble at any moment. Ah, Disney World Florida, full of happiness and smug little kids. Surely nothing bad could happen here. On the contrary, you wouldn't think it, but Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida is home to one of the most bone-chilling abandoned places on Earth. In 1965, Walt Disney bought an island in the middle of Bay Lake at the Orlando-based Disney World Resort. He originally named it Treasure Island, but later changed it to Discovery Island to stop people digging up the soil. The island was officially open to guests in 1974. Discovery Island was a wildlife attraction where guests could observe rare species such as scarlet ibises, Galapagos tortoises, lemurs and many others. All was going well until July the 9th, 1999, when the island was suddenly closed to the public, and all the animals were hastily relocated to zoos away from the island. It isn't known why the Discovery Island attraction was closed, but many rumours have suggested that a bacterium capable of killing humans, called amoeba, was discovered in the waters surrounding the island. Oops. The island was simply abandoned and was left to be taken over by the wild. Very few have stepped foot on the island ever since, and today it's an eerie reminder of the fun park attraction that once was. The island is full of abandoned buildings and attractions, all engulfed by nature. The island is now home to a family of highly aggressive vultures, as well as some other bizarre items such as preserved snakes in jars, I've no idea why. This derelict and potentially life-threatening island still sits undisturbed and quietly concealing its mysteries, right in the middle of the bright lights and commercial perfection that is Disney World Florida. It was the early 21st century in Ireland, and the country was in the middle of a housing bubble. Houses were selling like hotcakes, and property development was happening at an unprecedented rate. But then the luck of the Irish ran out, and in 2008 the housing market crashed. Thousands of houses that were still in the middle of development were simply never finished and were abandoned due to a lack of funds and falling demand. These abandoned residential estates were given highly optimistic names such as Paradise Valley. However, today they're nothing of the sort. They're extremely creepy to witness, and are reminiscent of a post-apocalyptic Desperate Housewives. Man, that would be a good show. They have since come to be known as the Ghost Estates of Ireland. Somewhere that looks this creepy just has to be haunted. Seeing these makes you think how strange our world would appear if all the humans suddenly disappeared. Just a splattering of human life makes all the difference between a cosy, welcoming home and this unnerving scene.
During World War II, the British Navy built an array of sea forts just off the southeast coast of England, called the Monsell Forts, also commonly referred to as the Red Sands Sea Forts. They may look like ATAT walkers, but their purpose was not to attack, but to defend the United Kingdom against German air raids. Following the war, they were decommissioned in the 1950s. Shortly afterwards, however, they were used as pirate radio stations to broadcast illegal radio waves across the United Kingdom, until they were shut down by the British government in 1967. Ever since, the forts have been abandoned and now stand as an eerie reminder of a truly horrific part of history. There is, however, a dispute going on over who actually owns these forts. A man named Paddy Roy Bates purchased the nearby Rough Sands Fort in 1964 and lived in it. He decided to claim the fort as his own country, naming it the Principality of Sealand. He then told all the other countries in Europe that Sealand was an official principality, and they all said, no, no it's not. Bates, however, was adamant that Sealand should be an officially recognised nation, and to prove his point, he claimed the Monsell Sea Fort as official land and property of Sealand. Yeah, that'll show him. Um, no. England basically said, I don't think so, old chap, there are, give them back. The debate over their ownership and whether the Principality of Sealand even exists still goes on to this day. Just to clarify things, it totally doesn't exist. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea states, Artificial islands, installations and structures do not possess the status of islands. They have no territorial sea of their own. Yeah, sorry about that, Sealand. Next up is this UFO-like structure called Buzludza. First opened in 1981, it was the home of the Bulgarian Communist Party during the Soviet era, because a rectangular building is far too capitalist. This impressive piece of Soviet architecture sits in the central Balkan mountains in Bulgaria. It was this ominous building where some of the most infamous and controversial politics originated from during the Cold War. But when the Iron Curtain fell in 1990, marking the end of the Soviet regime, the Buzz Ludza was completely abandoned. What was once a political powerhouse and a global symbol of communism is now just a chilling piece of history, left to succumb to the whims of the snow and ice. The building is now completely in ruins, and stepping inside it feels like entering some kind of communist alien spacecraft, if that's even a thing. I wonder if they do have communism in space. The Ruyang Hotel in North Korea's capital, Pyongyang, is not as totally abandoned as the other locations on this list, but that doesn't change the fact that it's bloody creepy. Construction of this monolithic ode to failed communism began in 1987, when North Korea was looking somewhat prosperous and was expecting an influx of tourists to witness the self-styled greatest nation on earth. Build it and they will come, someone told Kim Il-sung, but in the end, no one came. The Soviet Union fell and in 1992, North Korea ceased construction due to a lack of funds. You've got to give it to them, they don't do things by halves. If North Korea wants to build a tourist hotel, they're gonna build a bloody big one. This 105 floor giant has stood completely empty ever since. It's now no more than an overwhelming monument to the utopia that North Korea has tried ever so hard to achieve, but for the poor unfortunate residents of the country has sadly failed. Things started to appear hopeful in 2008 when North Korea announced that they had resumed work on the hotel. Then in 2011, the exterior was eventually completed with glass panels. It now looks slightly less intimidating, although the excitement was short lived. North Korea couldn't muster up enough funds to complete the interior. The opening of the hotel has been scheduled numerous times in recent years, but every time it has been postponed. Probably due to the fact that if you step inside the hotel, it's still a completely empty shell. At least that's what some sources say. After all, North Korea is an extremely secretive place. Who knows what's actually going on inside there? They could be building North Korea's very own Disneyland for all we know, or more likely concealing a missile factory. In the Zhejiang province of eastern China sits a large lake that holds an underwater secret. This lake is called Qiando Lake, which translates as Thousand Island Lake. 
At the bottom of this enormous body of water sits a forgotten ancient city called Xicheng, which means Lion City. The underwater city of Xicheng is basically like the lost city of Atlantis, except we know where this one is. Also, Xicheng was never actually lost in the first place, it was simply flooded and abandoned. At one time, Xicheng was a centre of economics and politics in eastern China. It was a huge, beautiful city, full of dazzling white temples and arches, paved roads and thousands of houses. The city is steeped in heritage and culture. Built 1300 years ago, this large ancient city covered an area of approximately 62 football fields. But the Chinese government was obviously more concerned with energy revenues than preserving cultural heritage. Because in 1959, the Chinese government flooded the valley that Xicheng sits in to make a new artificial lake. For what purpose? Well, they decided a new hydroelectric power station was required and this would be the ideal location. This gigantic man-made reservoir, which has been named Kiando Lake, now hides what once was, and in some respects still is, one of the most beautiful cities that China has ever known. And lastly, we have the radioactive city of Pripyat. On the 26th of April 1986 at Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine, an argument broke out between two senior nuclear engineers over whether or not they should run a potentially dangerous test on the reactor. They ended up running the test, and the nuclear reactor core malfunctioned and tragically exploded. Over the following weeks, many tons of highly radioactive cesium-137 was leaked into the atmosphere from the still burning reactor core. The nuclear fallout from the disaster covered much of Europe. One of the worst affected areas was the nearby city of Pripyat, which was built to house workers at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. In total, 350,400 people from Pripyat and from other towns several miles around the disaster area was permanently evacuated from their homes. An area covering a thousand square miles around the Chernobyl plant was completely abandoned due to it being contaminated with fatal levels of radiation. This area, known as the Exclusion Zone, or Zone of Alienation, which is way cooler, is now the most severely abandoned place on Earth. Nature has taken over and animals heavily disfigured by radiation run wild. With no human competition, these mutant animals have claimed the exclusion zone as their very own. It's like an alien landscape crossed with post-apocalyptic desolation. If it weren't so radioactive, it would be the perfect spot for a game of paintball. The trees in a four square mile area surrounding the reactor core received a severely large dose of radiation and were subsequently killed. The radiation caused them to turn an eerie reddish brown colour. Because of this, the area has been given the name of the Red Forest. The Red Forest is one of the most radioactive places in the world today. Scientists say the exclusion zone will not be safe enough for humans to re-inhabit for another 20,000 years. Until then, it serves as a huge living laboratory for scientists to measure the effects of radiation poisoning on animals and wildlife, as well as a memorial to the worst nuclear tragedy that has ever happened. Thanks for the view. Subscribe for more 42.